What's up guys, straight from the chest. Guys, thank you for tuning in with me on another wonderful, wonderful episode, hopefully. <laughs> and hopefully you can gain some value from it as well. Guys, my name is Justin Groth and I'm your host. Again, welcome and thank you for tuning in with me. If you're new and you're uninitiated, this is a podcast that I, that I in hopes, um, try to extract some of the some of the dormant passions that possibly lie within you through the words, through the message. That's very important for me. That's the reason behind this message. That's the reason behind this podcast. And I hope it delivers some, some value to you that helps you possibly, possibly reflect what, with what's going on in your life and hopefully change by re- way of reflection and apply some of these principles that you might hear in this upcoming message. So without further ado, I'd like to jump right into it. Guys, most of you know that I, if you've been listening to me for any length of time, you know that I talk about my mom a lot. And that's in part because my mom and I have a very tight relationship. Um, You know, especially when we got, when I got older. Um, And I don't talk about my dad much, but I don't want you to get confused because my dad and I, we have a very, very good relationship as well. But my dad is, well, to give you some context, um, my dad is somebody who he's the only, actually the only person that I look up to. I don't admire or look up to anybody else. And I know that might sound, sound, sound cold or sound, uh, you know, a fallacy in a way, but I promise you it's not. Um, he's who I emulate in terms of who I am in my business, everything. So, you know, other than Jesus, he's the one that I, that I look up to and lead behind. Um, and he's, he's a very important person in my life and in terms of the structure and, and really who I am in general. And, um, one, one thing my dad used to always say, I mean, I remember this when I was a kid growing up, you know, my dad, he is, he's got such a soft and pure heart. And I think I derived that from him. And, and I, and I think I, I evolved with those constructs in place from him and watching him. And that's how I, that's what I emulated. And that's what I feel. And also probably there's some element of biological wiring involved, right? But at the same time, I saw that I emulated that. And, you know, his heart is so pure for animals, for, for people in general, for humanity in general. Um, and, but one of the things that he's not is he's not soft when it matters. And this is important to note. When I was growing up, there were things that I cried about. You know, I mean, as we all do when we're kids and there's certain things that I put a precedence on that, that were, that was needless or futile that most of us do when we're kids. And I remember one saying that will always live with me for good reason. And this is something that I do not take back and I would not have it any other way being an adult now and looking back on my life. But there was, if I ever cried about something that was, was meaningless and to begin with and it was something that, you know, I was, oh, I wasn't getting my way as a kid. Uh, my dad would say these words. He would say four words, one of them, was, which is a, just an utterance, but you'll see. He said, oh, baby, go where? And I, <laughs> those words help shape me. Those four words, ah, oh, baby, go when? Because obviously, like he's like he's insinuating, it's not really that big of a deal. Toughen up, stop being a pussy, and let's go. Let's get a move on. That helped shape me. That helped shape me right there. And some of us, some of us, don't allow for that toughen. That, that oh, I'm sorry. That tough that tough language to enter in our being because we, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to contend with that because then that's obviously a a fight. And, but I'm telling you, that's how you shape you. That's how you become a better person. When you contend with something that is, that is actually worth fighting for. 
You know, so what he was saying was, in his way, don't be a little boy. Man up. Toughen up. And that mattered. And we're losing sight of that. If you think for one second you're going to do anything of paramount, monumental enterprise, so to speak, if you're going to have anything of, of constituent value and you think it's going to come just kind of, it's, it's kind of, you're going to kind of meander into it, wrong. That's not how this life works and you already kind of understand that. If you're not going through a tumultuous time right now, you don't have anything probably of of monumental enterprise approaching and that sucks so if there isn't a pain restriction if there isn't a pain um, associated with what you're going through right now it's probably not anything of 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 inordinate substrate value the pain has to become a prerequisite the pain is always a prerequisite and it's necessary but you need to toughen up just a little bit. And for everybody that looks a little bit different. But for me, those words, I'll never take back. Those words help me in my day to day. And he doesn't know that. Well, now he does. But what's your, what's your, oh, baby, go wham. When are you gonna say that to yourself? And toughen up and realize that if you don't have anything to contend with, if there's nothing that's painful to you in your life right now, you probably don't have anything of, 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 of massive value approaching. And that sucks, man. Like I said. So the pain is necessary. And I know you hear it. But I think you need to contend with it. I think it's a, there's a difference. I think you need to contend with pain sometimes voluntarily and that is something that most of us will never inflict on our own self because why would we well why wouldn't you why wouldn't you do you want to be better now there's elements of pain that you inflict right you're not going to go home and 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 obviously tear your house down and say i'm going to rebuild my house that's stupid but <laughs> But you would quit your job being that it's something that you don't find value in and it's something that you don't like doing and it actually worsens you on your day to day. So your sufferings are not amounting to anything because you're suffering for something that's, that's futile in the long run and it's not amounting to anything. It's not building you up. It's not, it's not gravitating you towards something that you find meaning in. So yes, so that would be a suffering worth suffering for. Or I'm sorry, that would be a truth rather worth suffering for. Quitting your job right now and doing something that doesn't make as much money but you find inordinate value in, that is putting pain on yourself. But if that's something that you find value in and meaning in and it's actually something that in, in, ignites you from the inside out, why wouldn't you put an instantiation on that in your life? Because it takes guts and it takes bravery and it takes courage, all of which you probably don't have. If you do have it, then show it and do something about your current situation that you hate. If, it, if you're not doing something that's worth contending with, you're not doing anything of value or merit. And when you do this certain thing, expect hurdles to be in your path. Expect to fall. Expect to get scraped up or hit or even sliced up. Expect that. Nothing ever is going to become anything in your life of inordinate value and something you can stand on with actual confidence if it doesn't bruise and batter you along the way. Why do you think people do marathons and, 
and, and, and Iron Man's and all that, you think that they come out unscathed at the end? None of them do. None of them come out of there with exactly the same footprint that they started with. It's, it's now a battered footprint. But now they have something that they can tuck under their belt and be proud of and confident with. And that's why they do Iron Man's. That and the competitive factor, obviously. But that's why they do those things, man. They're contending with something that they find value and meaning in. Now that's just one, that's just one example. But if you don't believe in what I'm saying, then you could, you could arguably stink, take, 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 take the stance of, well, there would be nobody of having, there would be no, in, there would be no valuable businesses on the horizon or instantiated in the, in what they are now, because nobody would go take the risk. And they would just, you know, I don't know, stick to just like, I don't know, farming and just doing like the things that we need to do to survive. And we would have never evolved into the civilization that we have. So we come from a long ancestry of contenders. But what are you going to contend with that's going to instantiate your identity on this planet? What? What is that? If you haven't figured it out now, you better start trying. Because every day that goes by, it's not just a day. That's a day that you wasted that God woke you up for to contend with something to leave your footprint with. Don't take a day for granted. I guess I'm asking you, what do you derive meaning from? What makes you a better person when you think about it? What makes you want to do better things for people or what makes you want to be better and do better and thrive when you think about doing whatever it is you think about doing or implementing or building or devising? What is that? Because that is the thing that is going to catapult you to a new level. And of course that level is unseen. Of course that level takes faith, but it, that, that's, what, that's what makes this whole process worthwhile. Because there's nothing of, there's nothing of value, or I shouldn't say value, there's nothing of prestige when it keeps you comfortable. Nothing. So if you're looking for prestige in your life, if you're looking for, if you're looking for elevated, I'm losing my words. If you're looking for, if you're looking to stand on the precipice of something that you don't know exists, but you feel that you could conquer it. If you don't contend with whatever that is, that is a life not worth living. Because we're all going to suffer in this life. What are you suffering for though? What are you choosing to suffer for? That's going to become the dichotomy between you living your best and you skating through in life. I find value in a couple of things right now. And they're definitely unbeknownst to me. And I definitely don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but I fucking try every day. And I don't give up. Probably because I'm too... Probably because I'm way too disciplined and indebted to doing something that I see no, I see no, I see no end to. 
And so I think that's what keeps me going is the unknown. But I know that I would not subtract it for more comfort. Because to me, I'm losing out if I'm not doing it. And that's how you know when you can't do, when you, when something you stop doing leaves a void in you and it's a perpetual urgency that you feel to continue with, that's something worthwhile. That's something worth contending with. That's something of meaning. And you can't dispute that and you should not discard that. That's how you get to know what you're made of. So I'm going to do what my dad did to my kid, whether he likes it or not. I'm going to make him toughen up. I'm going to do it because I love him or her. I'm going to do it because I love them because that's what my dad does to me because he loves me and he wants to see me be my best and he knows what I have inside and he knows what it takes and that's why he was giving me those words of encouragement even though at the time they seemed like words of despair and I'm always going to remember that and that's always going to be with me whether I laugh at it or whether I take it seriously because they both have they both have attached meanings to those times, right? I can laugh about it because it's a kind of a funny phrase. There's humor in it, but there's purpose behind it. And there's drive behind that purpose. So I'm never, those words are never going to leave me. What are your, what's, what's your phrase? What is your phrase that makes you toughen up? Don't be afraid to contend with something. It's how you draw meaning out of your life. Done.